Hello everyone, I'm Maria. Welcome to CN Me. This is my channel. Let's just get into the video. There really is no smell like the smell of the ocean. However, have you ever thought why the ocean smells like it does? The ocean smell cannot be attributed to one specific compound. Rather, it is the combination of several compounds with different origins that gives the ocean its unique and characteristic smell. Today we will talk about the three most important and kind of most understood substances a part of the ocean smell, which have different origins, mainly death, sex, and seafood. The first one we're going to talk about is death. <coughs> yeah, what's up? Probably the most common and most well understood compound that gives the ocean its smell is called DMS, which is short for dimethyl sulfide. Dimethyl sulfide is a result of bacteria eating phytoplankton. What are phytoplankton? Phytoplankton are nothing more than microscopic algae that exist all around the world. They consume light and CO2 and release organic matter and oxygen. Do not underestimate these little guys just yet because even though they are really small, they do produce 70% of the oxygen that you and I are breathing at the moment. This meaning that 70% of the oxygen which is in the atmosphere is produced by this phytoplankton, more than all the trees and plants in la on land combined. However, it is quite tough being a tiny microscopic algae in the middle of the oceans. As one of their strategies against environmental stress, they produce something called DMSP, which is short for dimethyl sulfonyopropionate. DMSP can be produced as some kind of self-produced sunscreen, which protects them against harmful sunlight. They also use it as an osmolite, which is basically used to control the amount of water inside the cell by balancing the water that is inside the cell with the salt water where they are floating in. This prevents them from e either exploding or shrinking. When phytoplankton dies, they become this yummy all-you-can-eat bacteria buffet, which the bacteria totally take advantage of. So when they do eat the phytoplankton, they transform DMSP into DMS. DMS is then released into the atmosphere and becomes part of the ocean smell. Side note there, DMS is also very important for the formation of clouds because once it's released into the atmosphere, it is transformed into sulfate molecules which aggregate together to form sulfate aerosols, which at some point become as big as dust particles, becoming something called cloud condensation nuclei, which means that water or vapor molecules can start attaching to the sulfate molecules, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and voila! clouds arrive. It's important to note this, this is not the only molecule responsible for cloud formation, but it is one of them. Now, let's talk about sex. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> no, I'm not so... Dick job to Renis. <laughs> What's up, guys? By the way, the correct pronunciation for this word is dictyopterines. Please um, forgive Pass Maria for that. Yeah, uh, that's it. See you around. Me? Together with other aldehydes, are also responsible for a part of the ocean smell, and also the smell of algae sex. The algae can reproduce sexually, which means they can produce male and female gametes, or in other words, eggs and sperm. These eggs and sperm are then released into the ocean, where they will then meet and create tiny little cute baby algae. Since the ocean is, well, quite big, and there are also other sperm and eggs floating around, the uh, egg and the sperm of the same species have somehow to find each other in the middle of this big confusion. So. The eggs of the algae produce pheromones, one of them being Dictyopterenes, amongst others, to attract the sperm to them in order to fertilize and have babies. Baby algae. Uh, these pheromones are also then released into the atmosphere and are big then again, giving the ocean part of its smell. Last but not least, let's talk about bromophenols. Wow. Bromophenol is a compound that gives seafood its characteristic taste. It's magnifique. 
However, it is probably not produced by the seafood animals themselves, but rather by their prey, like worms that live in the benthic systems or algae. The reason why these worms and algae produce these bromophenols is not entirely clear, but there are theories that they use it to protect themselves from predators. Even though their biological function is not entirely clear, they are known to have very interesting properties that can be used in biotechnology. They have antioxidant, anti-cancerogenous, anti-thrombotic, anti-diabetic, and even antimicrobial properties that hence give them very important and interesting things for scientists to work with. This was it, ocean people. I do hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned a bit today and had fun with it. And so thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Oh darn it, I lost it. I need my <laughs> thingy. <laughs>